Good evening, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, all over the earth, wherever you might be, and listen to this message. May the Lord bless you tonight. May the Holy Spirit open your eyes and ears of understanding so you might know everything and everything that I teach tonight. He can show you and can bless you and can help you to have a better understanding who we are in Christ. Tonight's teaching is families of faith. And it goes like this. Through wisdom a house is built and by understanding is established. Proverbs 24 verse 3. God gave a lot of wisdom to Solomon to write his Proverbs. And very clearly here says, through the wisdom of God, a house is built. And by his understanding, it is, it is established. So it's important that we have God, his understanding. For all of us who are in Christ, we are blessed because the Holy Spirit can help us to have a greater understanding of who we are in Christ. Let me give you a couple more, more scriptures in this. Let's go on here to also to Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. This is Jesus' words. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will look at him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain spended on the floods, and the floods came, and the winds blow and beat on the house, and it beat and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears this word, these sayings of mine and does not do them will be a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Mm -hmm. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat on the house, and it fell. And great was its fall. You know, Jesus' words is just so amazing. And me, being in construction for so many years, I understand exactly what needs to be done in every building and about the foundation of the building. is How important is the foundation of the building? And how at times that we got to take from the, from the ground, the soil, and test it to see how deep, and the engineer has to look at the soil and tell us how deep we have to go down to find other shard or rock to build. You know, it's best to build on the rock, to go all the way down and touch the rock. So the building is so strong. Here is the same saying, let's not talk about too much about building, but here Jesus says very clearly that the importance there is for us to build our life in His Word. And everything that we do is to be 100% on His Word. Because we know that we have a deceiver who comes around to help us to compromise. But we need to be stand the ground and say, no, 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 no. I will not do any of that. I cannot tell you, and I will, I will say more later on about my life, but I want to show you the scriptures first. It's important that because it says that he is, the rain came, and the floods came, and the wind came, and beat up against the house, but it did not fall because the foundation was on the rock, which the rock is Jesus Christ. But the foolish builder, and there are so many foolish people on this earth at the moment, they think they know everything. They think they go all the answers in their hands. 
I was one of those foolish people before I got saved. But God had mercy on my life and came and rescued me. Rescued me from myself. I thought I knew everything too. And religion, you know, nobody preached, no, everybody was so scared to tell me about, to tell me about Jesus. And religion, nobody taught me the importance of me building up my life in Jesus and on the rock. Let's also read Psalm 127 verse 1. Unless the Lord built the house, the life is in vain who built it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. We need to surrender our lives totally to the Lord and allow Him and Him only to build our homes. Because every time we have been knowingly or unknowingly, you start doing things with your own strength, the Lord goes like this with the hands up and says, okay, this is you, you want to do it by yourself? Okay, I'll let you do it. Because He has given us freedom. We know His lives, we are His sons. He has given us freedom for us to choose, to make our own decisions. But the best decision for us is to allow Him to build a home. And how do we do that? But constantly, reading the Word of God and constantly have the right teaching, the right understanding, because let me tell you, the enemy also uses people to bring confusion into the teachings. So, you, you know, you cannot hear anybody who speaks. You got to choose to who you listen to, to the Word of God. So the Lord built the house, and if He doesn't build the house, the labor is in vain. Everything will collapse. And unless the Lord also guards, guards what, you, what you're building, the watchman starts awake for nothing. And the last scripture, which is again in Joshua 24, that Joshua himself, he made a decision. And we also need to make a decision to where, to who we serve, where we're doing, where we're going. So in Joshua 24, verse 14 and 15. Now therefore hear the Lord, serve Him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom will you serve. Whether the gods which the fathers served and they were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites, or those in those lands, you dwell. But as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. <clears throat> Joshua was telling the whole people of Israel to choose to say to have reverence before your Lord to put away those false gods there's so many people today even Christians who are in the houses full of idols in the houses in the homes and that's a teaching for another day where God showed me, where He showed me about His idols in the place, the taking His position. God will not share you. He will not share you with the devil. He will not share you. It's like my myself, I will not share my wife with another man. Or 
a, you know, a wife for another husband. He will not share her husband with another man. It's important that we understand that. The, the Lord loves us so much, He will not share you with idols. And He says very clearly here, and if you, see, if you think that this is not right to, to serve the Lord, choose this day who you want to serve. You want to serve another God? Or you want to serve the Lord? And Joshua told them so clearly, and he said to them, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, but not all my children, all people, they're all following to what I'm telling them. But I'm continuing speaking live to my, to my families. And again, I'm saying families, yeah, because I made so much mess in the past that it's now, it's three families to become one. Because I wasn't building, I wasn't building my life on the rock. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Look at the mess Israel got involved in, how much mess they made. They were in exile for 2,000 years. Why? Because they were serving other gods. The Messiah came and they didn't even recognize that he was the Messiah. Jesus said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. I came to take you, but you were not willing. They weren't willing. No, they, don't, they, weren't under, they didn't understand that he came for that. And look at even what's happening to Israel today. So it's important in this teaching. Through wisdom the house is built, and, and by his understanding is established. You know, I was the one, the foolish builder, who I was trying, I was, I made so much destruction. I thought I was untouchable. Until I came to the point, the 2002, I had the money, I had the authority, I had the cars, I had the castles, I had women everywhere, I thought that was it. And I was one step away. And I already, I already decided to commit suicide. I was one step away of committing suicide. If it wasn't for his mercy and, he, and the love he had for me, I would be already now in hell, burning for eternity. But all the messes that I made, Whatever you sow, you will reap. All the sowing that I did in my life those days, I'm still reaping today the fruit of that life that I did then. And I'm talking about before 2002. So it was like 21 years ago. And I'm still having problems today because of, the, of those choices that I made then. So, <laughs> ah, my brothers and sisters, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can go to the Father except through Him. So I encourage every one of you to listen to this teaching and build your life on His Word. The family is the most important institution in the world. And it was God's idea at the first at the first time in the first place. It was God's idea. God made Adam and Eve. So let's look at in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord said,
said, the, the Lord God said, it is not good for a, for a man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. So it was God's idea that he made the woman to help, to be helped by it to the man. And then as we go to verse 21 and 24, chapter 2, verse 21 and 24, and the Lord God caused deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and, and closed up the flesh in his place. Then the rib which the Lord God has taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her into the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. And in verse 24, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother, and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So it's important that the husband that Lord bought in your life, that you honor him and love him and be submitted to him as a wife, and the same thing, the man should love the wife as Jesus loved his church and died for it. It's important that you live in harmony at home, especially when you building a house and together wife, husband and children read the word together establish your children in the word from early days when they actually listen to you before they become old enough they don't want to hear you what you say anymore teach your children in the home Character and integrity are formed, values are made clear, and goals are set. This lasts a lifetime, and if they are unformed correctly, the results are catastrophic. What are you teaching the kids? At home, both husband and wife, father and mother, if you don't teach it properly, the results, the results will be catastrophic and you will cry. Bad patterns can, la can last a lifetime. It is not good. We as children of God, we as Christians, we have, we need to confirm to the Word of God. We cannot allow the patterns of the past. We all had patterns. We all had something that was holding us to it. I was a womanizer, okay? But I didn't allow that to continue after I got saved. Other people, they are gamblers. They, they used to gamble, lose all the money on the poker machines or at the casinos. You cannot do that anymore as you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. You can't say, ah, oh, you know, brother, I can't do that anymore. Sometimes I can't help myself. No, 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 no. If you're a new creation in Christ Jesus, born from above within, and you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, there's one thing that I can say to you. You love sin. It's not that you can't do it, but you just like what you're doing. So it's important that you understand that if you don't change those things, the results will be catastrophic for your family. God, through His love and grace, can help us to live if we allow Him. He can help us to live perfectly in our homes and in harmony with one another and love with one another and in and love with him. Today Satan is attacking the family as never before. Let's read another scripture from First Peter chapter five verse eight and nine.
be so by vigilant because your adversary the devil walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he might devour resist him steadfast in the fight knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world you see what the apostle Peter said to the, to the church be so very vigilant in other words you cannot afford to let for one moment the enemy to come in because they were said the devil is walking around he is walking around and looking in homes and says who today can I take who can I convince him to do my bit He's like a roaring lion. But we have Jesus Christ, the real lion inside us, if we choose to walk with him. Steadfast in the faith. Resisting and steadfast in the faith. You gotta resist him because temptation will come and he will try to destroy your family. But it's up to you to resist me. Says now, go away. If he says to you hundred times, hundred times, you tell him go away. But it's important that you know the word of God. How can you be a Christian without knowing the word of God? How can you not know what 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 your this is your life? And here very clearly it says the same suffering. It's all the brothers around the world that are going through the same problems. You're not alone. <coughs> and you can't say, oh brother, you don't know what I'm going through. Really? You think you're the only person who's going through hard, hard, hard life? We're all having the same issues and problems. And we keep on complaining. We keep on saying, God, where are you? Why don't you read John 3, 16 and 17? That's the scripture that I've got saved to. God so loved the world he gave. His one and only son. So whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him, the scripture tells us. So God gave his son. We, he's given us that the authority and the power by his son and the Holy Spirit for us to walk as victorious, to walk as victorious Christian. But if you choose to go back in the mud, it's a choice. And what does it say in, in John chapter 10, verse 10? The thief. What is this kind to do? The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that you might have life and that might have it more abundantly. So don't need to turn don't need to turn the devil. Kick him out of your home. Kick him out. Do not let him come in your home. Do not allow anything in your home is not from the Lord because anything you have in your home. When I got saved, the first week the Holy Spirit every night woke me up and showed me things in my home, they were wrong. Some that I knew and some of the things I didn't know. And then the, and on, the, on the sixth day of that was Saturday night, the Lord, because when I cleaned up my house from Monday to Saturday, then all the things, things that I know that were wrong and things, the prayers of the devil sent me in my home for him to have access to my house. Do not let nothing in your home that is not from the Lord because you give access to the devil to come to your house. And then I heard him screaming out of my apartment, out of my apartment because the Lord Jesus 
command him to leave my place. The thief is a thief. Comes only except but to steal. So he comes to steal from you and to kill you if he can and to destroy you. I was one step away committing suicide. He was going to kill me. He was going to destroy me. On the beginning, the city was, it was beautiful and all, all was nice and pleasurable. But they sucked you down until there's no more life. So Jesus, he came, why? To give us life and life more abundantly. We are loved by God the Father. We are loved by God the Son, Jesus Christ. And we are loved by the Holy Spirit. And He has promised us He will never leave us, nor will He forsake us. And He is with us. Every, every day we walk with Him. What can it be our defenses against such attacks? As always, our best defense is the Word of God. For me, I don't care what anybody tells me. I don't care what anybody preaches. I, I, if it's not written, I dismiss it. You can be the best teacher and the best preacher in the world. But for me, if it's not written, I dismiss it. Because the Word of God is life. It's important that you read the, the, the Word of God together with your family. It's very important that you have family devotions. Pray for one another daily. Pray for your loved ones daily and Pray by the name who you pray for. It's important. Pray without ceasing, as the word says, without stopping. And most of all, commit your marriage to Christ. Commit your marriage to Christ. In three courts. You are one court, your wife is the other court, and God Himself in the center is the third court. Three courts as one. Three courts, like a rope is, or three courts as one. And years ago, when I first got, first got saved and I was in the church, and the Lord showed me about two people in the church and told me, he showed me a picture of those two and him together as one and told me to tell them to put him first and put each other first and be three as one. Because they were having problems in the marriage. And unfortunately, years later, they divorced. Because they didn't hear the warning of the Holy Spirit. The wife came to, to speak to me afterwards, later, but there was too late. It was, the man was gone. So, commit your marriage to Christ. Because it's not only about you. What about your children? It's important that we have responsibility when we brought those children to the world. To guide them and help them to walk the righteous way. And to understand the importance to be with Christ. Today we have so many new inventions, technology advancements. We have phones. Most families today 
They're on the phone. They don't even talk to each other at home. There's so many things that are coming against you to take you away from one another and from away from the Word of God and God. The devil will do anything to take you away. But it's important that we all know, know and learn that what care are the times? When are you going to spend time with each other? Talk to each other? Love one another? Make time for the family? It's important that we all walk in faith. It's important that we, how can we go and preach the gospel to the world if, uh, if there's turmoil at home? It's important that we as a unit of families, even the family of glory to God. It's important for the pastors of glory to God. It's important that we all walk together. It's important for the pastors to go to the homes and teach everyone. At the same time, the pastor has he needs to have the support of the family, the support of the church, for him to be able not to be full time and working, but also have time to visit the, the homes and help the people and about the, the only understanding with the word of God. So it's important not to allow the to take attention away from the family, it's important that you know put times in place. And you say, from 7 to 9 o'clock at night, we're going to read the Word of God. Or from 7 o'clock at night to 8 o'clock at night, one hour at night time. It's important to get to around the table together, husband and wife and the children. The family unit is so important. The lack of gatherings weakens the foundation and faith of the family unit. It's important even when the kids grow up and go home with the family to have fellowship with the family. Get together, see one another, spend time with each other. And it's important that if something it doesn't sit right, that you ask the question as first, second, and the third time. Even with brothers in the church and sisters in the church, what did you mean by that brother or sister? What you actually meant by that? What is actually saying to me? Don't presume something. Don't allow the enemy take you somewhere you're not supposed to be going. the question what is the state of your family I know what I've done in my family and only God can put my family together now after all the things that I've done but to you you can make changes. You can make changes towards your husband. You can make changes towards your wife. The children need to see a loving home. And they want to be home because there's, there's love between the father and the mother. And teach your children perfectly how to walk in this new life. It's very hard to bring families today. It's so, so hard to bring families in this world today. And the same thing in the church. Brothers and sisters in the, in, in the church, it's important that we love one another and we help one another. And the same thing for the grandparents to always spend time with the children and grandchildren. And the same time for us to be in the Word, understand the Word, and 
understand the word. Through wisdom a house is built. And by understanding is established. We need to, I'm, I'm asking the Lord every day to give me more wisdom. It's important that we have wisdom, His wisdom operating in our lives. And by His understanding, and by the understanding of the Word of God, the house is established. I personally, even now, every word that comes out of my mouth is calculated. I will not let it come out of my mouth unless it's God with the word. And I, even today, I was, I was in a meeting with somebody who this man has been saved through me, but a lot of Christians, they don't watch what the saying comes out of the mouth. We gotta make choice, right choices in everything. We gotta think right. We gotta think. What would the Lord do in this situation? And if you know the word of God, you will do exactly if you if you know the word of God and you want to do what the word of God says to do, you will not fall in the pit. You will not, you will not let Our, our foundation is the rock, is Jesus Christ. So everything that we do is got to be by the word of God. Remember what I just said, what I read from 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 9. The ever said the devil is going around like a roaring lion, saying to whom he might devour. He wants to devour you. He's a thief. He wants to steal from you. He wants to kill you. My brothers and sisters, I finished it tonight. But I will encourage every one of you. I love you so much and I don't want to see. I was not in Christ. I did not know any better. A lot of things happened in my life before, as a child also. But most of all, I did not know the Word of God. I was not a new creation in Christ Jesus, but you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. So do not take the salvation. Jesus died for you, so you might live. Don't take this lightly. Build your life on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. Have fellowship with one another in the church. Love one another in the church. Love your wife and husband and father and mother and children. And my heart desires to see the church of glory to God to be this glorious church all over the earth where Jesus himself is our head. God bless you and have a blessed day and night, whatever you might be on earth. God bless you all.